Hello everybody, I'm Fishnet, I'm a former pro player, GM, I'm a content creator and I stream now, and I want to talk about Cauterize. Cot has a really weird history if you actually go back and look at it, but there's two versions in particular that I want to talk about. Old Cot and New Cot. Old Cot existed before patch 3.1 on Tigron's Tale, and New Cot existed after. So you can read, you saw the title, the game currently uses New Cot, and I want the game to go back to Old Cot and the old item store in general, even as a support player. Here's why. So for the first point, shooting stuff and having that stuff not dying isn't really fun gameplay. I don't actually have any stats or anything to back this up, but like, you play the video game, you know how playing against these sorts of comps feel. You know how much fun a flank is going to have here. For some more definitive things, having new caught makes poor support play less punishing when you heal people in caught. It makes good support play less rewarding, because when you heal out of caught, you do less. It makes poor tank and DPS play less punishing, because you're not punished as hard when you don't get out of caught. But it also makes good tank and DPS play less rewarding when you do get out of caught. So the summary of all this is that good play is rewarded less, and bad play is punished less. It's sort of a all watered down. On top of that, this bit about healing in particular means the game now rewards heal potting. If all I need to do is heal, because I can get away with only healing, it never falls off, I'm just going to heal. There's less incentive to do more. And most people don't enjoy heal botting, so there's not much incentive to go do the fun things of supporting. Old Cot has more depth without adding complexity, right? There's more of an early, mid, and late game. And just by those existing, you have depth. When was the last time you actually had to think about late game in a draft? Old Cot also means more item variety, and this one needs a bit of explaining. So Cot will always be strong unless something really drastic changes. Just because you have the option to buy more items doesn't necessarily mean that you will especially if that means passing up on the strongest item in the game. So bringing other items to Cauterize's level is more likely to add variety to the item store, especially if you compare it to making other items weaker. Uh, hyper sustain stuff would be more of a niche early game strat with old Cot, so it'd be less rampant, and comps where Cot 2 would be enough would exist. You wouldn't have super sustaining double backline be as oppressive as it is now. And if there's more variety in comps, well, that's good. And some of those, those comps, won't need caught free, so you get more item variety. Another effect of hyper sustained stuff being more niche is that these annoying comps will exist less because again, shooting things and having them not die isn't exactly peak gameplay. And when these comps will be played, because they'll still exist, they were run when old caught existed, people ran Megapot with old caught, they'll be less frustrating because even if they're as strong as they are right now early game, having them fall off makes them less frustrating to play against players. Instead of going from you get hit by a beam and you die, to hey, the game is playable now. It goes from early game comp has an advantage to early game comp has a disadvantage. It's better, it's less tilting, because there's a clear path to get to the late game for the other team to win. Oldcott also incentivizes going in, because you can actually kill things by yourself if you make a good play. So it rewards going in, going in is fun. If I wanted to stand back and shoot things, I'd go play Kovacs. The most fun playstyle should be the strongest, and rewarding fun things is good game design. And it's not like flanks will just be able to kill backlines for free with 90% caught either. Supports can still heal, of course, but they do damage in CC too, and the peel that that brings is a really good way of keeping people alive. It also means rejuve can be good again. If rejuve was 10% scaling now, it'd just be mid-game all the time. But with 90% caught, it can be strong without breaking the pacing of the game. So there's a whole other viable item, more variety, and it adds a hyper late game where your healing actually gets stronger, which is, that's cool and that means more variety and viable options in the item store. So here's a summary of the main points. Now some people don't actually want old caught back, and it was changed for a reason, so I want to give counter arguments. 75% caught is enough. Where's Furia? Are they hiding down here still? Oh, here she is. No, the beam. Like, why is this- 90% caught was too strong. So 90% caught means there's depth and counterplay, which I'm going to be addressing this later. 90% caught made caught mandatory. Caught is going to be mandatory in a game of supports. You don't really have a decision to make. You're going to buy caught, or you're not going to be able to kill anything. And it's not different now. And again, caught 2 isn't even enough anymore, so new caught makes caught even more mandatory, because you have to get it to level 3. 
A common argument is that weapon attacks should apply a 50% anti-heal at base, and that cauterize should scale 10% per level. So this doesn't actually make caught any less mandatory, you'd still want that 80% caught. It's potentially confusing for new players, it's added complexity, and I heard Evil Mojo doesn't like this sort of wonky scaling. My biggest issues with it though, is that it just completely gets rid of the early game, and its potential power creep. I also don't like see any advantages that this has over old caught, right? Just kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Now I know that talking to the community in AOC is all well and good, but this is something I legitimately want changed, so I'm going to talk about Evil Mojo's reasoning for the changes. I'm going to bring up the patch notes show from 3.1 and talk about their arguments from there. So with these changes, they said they wanted to shift the cadence of the match flow. Wow, that's a lot of fancy words. Basically, they wanted a smoother journey towards your full item build, and it is. Lowering the prices did that. That was good, in my opinion. This is an all doom and gloom here. Adonis, a designer, said that they want to have more options. And you technically can buy a larger variety of items now. You have the option to. But only a few of them are viable. It's an illusion of choice, kind of like loadout cards and talents. You still have to buy and rush Cauterize and Result to play the game. I hope I've made that point already. Adonis also gave different examples. He said, if you're Fernando, Rector fundamentally changes how you have to play. You're overbearingly strong in round 1 because you're so strong and no one wants to shoot your shield, it's not worth it for them, to round like 3 or 4 when two people have max Wrecker and you pop your shield up and it's just gone in a second. He also said that for supports, caught not being at 90% means that you don't heal someone for like 2 when they're max caughted. It's a bad feeling for supports to invest your healing ability for it to almost have no effect. Adonis, I make a mistake when I get punished. Adonis, when I Eevee sword directly at a sniper, I die. Adonis, when I sit on point as a squishy, I get shot. Adonis, when I jump off the map, I die. Please fix. <laughs> Jokes aside, the reasoning here is that the gameplay changes too dramatically and in an unhealthy way. So let's go over the most obvious example here. Main tank Fernando's shield. Let's say we're playing Fernando on Brightmarsh, the other team is a Cassie, and the Cassie will be buying record this game. Let's go over the Fernando's possible options. You can play the point, just play the point normally. This does really well early game, but it's not as good of an option late game. You can play the side of point, just like play out of LOS the Cassie, but still shoot the other team's main tank. This is a good option if you just want to deny the other team's cap, and record doesn't really matter as much in this situation. You can go to the offlane, this is more aggressive. The sh shield being broken a bit faster, it hurts. But it doesn't matter as much because the Nando can still like make space. He has other tools he can use, like his damage and his ult. He can get on top of the other team's DPS, just like go run at the Cassie, find a flank route or something, play on your mount, play double offlane maybe. And this doesn't really rely on how strong Wrecker is. He can play point, but wait for his offlane to make a move first. So the Cassie has to make a decision between shooting point and helping with the Fernando's team's dive. He can also just play point tank some shots, and then use his shield to briefly get out of cauterize and get healed up so he can do, repeat the cycle. And I'm, I'm sure there are more options. I'm not a particularly fantastic main tank Fernando player, but the point is that there are multiple different options that the Fernando has. He doesn't just have to walk down mid with his shield up. And even for contesting the point, there's multiple options that don't necessarily rely on Wrecker. If you're walking down mid and you're just getting blown up, then don't do that. I, I guarantee you're probably just going too far up by yourself. You're probably the only one applying any pressure if you're just getting blown up super quickly. But the point is that you can still do main tank things, but the way that you have to do them changes. And you could make these plays now, but why would you? There's no incentive to, because going to point and holding up shield is pretty much always the strongest option at any stage in the game right now, because there's no scaling that doesn't fall off. And that's just gameplay. What if the Fernando or someone on the Fernando's teams bought different items? What if you had morale boost so you can make a play with your ults? What if you had master riding so even though you get bullied you can start with a positional advantage over the other team? What if you buy haven or blast shields or rejuice so you can survive a bit better? What if you buy nimble so you can play around different types of cover better? What if you buy wrecker so maybe neither team can contest too well? Or another option, what if the Nando's only viable way to survive wasn't to run a full shield build. What if he potentially had more viable options and talents or loadouts? But that's a topic for another video. So I do agree that the gameplay changes, I agree with that. But I disagree that it changes too drastically and in an unhealthy way because of the number of interesting, fun, and viable plays and counterplays that players have to accomplish the same goal, in this case, of being an effective main tank. 
I, I feel like the mistake here is that gameplay is being perceived as this graph. We have early game effectiveness, you have late game effectiveness. And people think that this is what old COD means, and this is what new COD means. But the issue with this is that it's such a gross oversimplification of the game because of how many options you have, which we talked about with the Fernando and Cassie example. Currently, the game looks something more like this. You have very few viable options because of how watered down the item store is. And I'd rather the game look like this, with more viable options, and different options being stronger at different points in the game. And now this is all game design, right? This is the choice that the designers have made on what kind of game they want. You can still push through all the trouble that new caught brings. You can nerf exterminate, you can nerf deep roots, you can make small tweaks to the item store, and you can keep doing buffs and nerfs and changes and all that, and you could make it work. But I don't want a game where it feels awful to play until you get items online. I don't want a game where there's not a huge difference between making poor plays and making great ones. I don't want a game where the best option is boring to most people, and I don't want a game where there's an illusion of choice. I want a game where there actually is an early, mid, and late game, and they're not frustrating. I want a game where mistakes get punished, and good plays are rewarded. I want a game where good plays are the most fun plays. It doesn't just allow for fun plays, but actually incentivizes them. I want a game where there's a variety of balanced, viable options, and 90% caught allows for that to happen. And that's going to be it for this video. I'm running out of ideas for videos, so if anyone's got good ideas, then put them in the comments and boost my metrics, and I release a new video every Saturday. If you agree with me, and you want this to maybe be added to the game, or at the very least you want Evil Mojo to respond to this, the best way to do that is to talk to your AOC reps. I've linked all their discords in the description. Go let them know. This video will be posted in their discords, but if you agree with it, give it a thumbs up reaction or something. Just make your voice heard. But uh, yeah, so I hope this helps explain what I think about Caught and why. Hopefully it actually helps the game. There have been rumors about the item store stuff getting changed soon, and if it's this, then I'm going to be such a smug little bitch. Anyways, I'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.